He's worthy of all glory and all honor. And we praise God that He woke us up this morning and we're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand. Thank God for seeing each and every one of you this morning who come out to the house of the Lord to worship with us. And I'm so glad the Lord has brought you thus far. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 19, verse 28 through 44. I'm going to read this morning, and it begins like this. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt, which is a donkey, a young donkey, tied, on which... No one has ever, I'm sorry, no one has yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. Verse 32, so those who were sent went away, found it just as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying this colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice all the mighty, for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees and the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry. Right. Verse 41, And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it saying, Would that you, even you, of my Jerusalem, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a, ba a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground and you and your children within you, and they sh will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Amen. This morning, I want to speak from this subject, a painful celebration. I want to speak from this subject this morning, a painful celebration. That great text, that great verse said, and Jesus wept. This is the second time we heard that, that Jesus wept. He wept the first time at the grave of Lazarus, and then he weeps again here in this text, uh, and we will see why as we want to discuss this thought today, a painful celebration. All of us in life have moments of celebration. Yes. We have birthdays yes. that we celebrate. Yes. We have anniversaries that we celebrate. Yes. We have graduations that we celebrate. Yes. We have all kinds of things, the birth of a child that we celebrate. We all have moments of celebration where something good or significant has happened to us and it's worthy of us taking a moment to celebrate accomplishments that we have. We all have moments of celebration. But there are also times when celebration is unpleasant. There are times when there is the moment for celebration but the celebration is not a very happy time. Yes. It's like that when we have birthdays. Uh, you're celebrating your life, the new age that you're in, but you are physically sick or dealing with a disease. It's a, it's a kind of a painful celebration. It's like that with uh, anniversaries. When the anniversary is coming around, you've been married for X number of years, but in the midst of being married X number of years, the marriage is in trouble. It's a painful celebration. It's like that whenever we come around to the holidays sometimes. We, it's Christmas time or it's Thanksgiving time to spend with family, but one family member is not there and will not be there. It becomes a painful 
celebration. It's like that when we find new jobs at times. It's, it's awesome, but the problem sometimes is, is that I got a new job, but it's still not enough money to, to meet all of my bills. It's, it's something to celebrate, but it's not as pleasant as you would like for it to be. Is everybody with me today? Yes. We all have in times in our lives painful celebrations. And this is the narrative in which we are investigating today. Jesus himself is about to have a painful celebration. Amen. We took a moment to tell you to read the entire narrative. One, so that you will know what's going on because uh, a lot of folks, this was the most Bible reading you did all week. Amen. 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 And two, I wanted you to make sure you had context. This is good for us to know today so we can see that Jesus this morning had a painful celebration. Palm Sunday is a, us reflecting on Jesus coming, making that last journey into <coughs> Jerusalem. This is actually his third journey to Jerusalem and his final journey to Jerusalem as our Lord and Savior is on his way to the cross. Yes. He's not heading there just for good times. He's heading there to be the Savior, to die and be the Savior of the entire world. Amen. He's about to pay the ultimate price for sin as we know it today. But the Lord helps us to understand even in the midst of a painful celebration, at the end of it all, God is going to get the glory. Yes. And you and I are going to be better for what That's Jesus right. has done Amen. because he went ahead with his painful celebration. Let's investigate our text this morning. We'll find some quick things and then we'll let everybody go home. Are you interested this morning? Amen. Yes. Amen. So try to don't, don't fall asleep on me. Just stay with me, all right? We'll do, we'll, we'll do what thus said the Lord. Painful celebrations. So Jesus is coming down the Mount of Olives. He's, he's done some wonderful things. He's been uh, uh, really busy for the last three years just really working things out in people's lives. And he's coming down now on this last journey. He's got about four or five more days alive. And then he's going to be crucified for our sins. And so he comes on his way to Jerusalem. And as he's coming, this wonderful scene is taking place. It's about to take place. And it's being set up, we just read it, how the people are going to meet him and celebrate him. And then we're going to see how the Pharisees are there saying, man, you got to be quiet with all that noise. They're saying some stuff about you we don't appreciate. And then they're going to, he's going to go on from there to, to look at his own country. And he's going to say to his own country, if you had only known I was coming, you could receive a blessing today. But because you didn't, you're going to be faced with some trials and tribulations. And so he goes on to give us that. Notice with me, if you will, as we look at this idea of a painful celebration, that even though Jesus is being celebrated, church, he's, he, it's still painful. First of all, notice this with me, that they receive Jesus as king, his followers. They receive him as a king by his followers. In the text that is before us in verses 28 through 38, they receive Jesus as a king. The text tells us that, that they, they, they do what, uh, they give him what royalty would, would honor, would have. They lay out the red carpet, so to speak, and they do, they honor him as he comes down. Reverend, well, why do they receive him as king? Well, it's because Jesus has been working mighty miracles in the lives of people. That's right. Jesus has taken the time of the last three years to show you and I that, watch this, he is a good ruler. He is a good ruler, that he is in charge, that he is on top of the things and that God has put authority on him and that what he's about to do represents who he really is one day, that he is a great and good and gracious ruler. Right. Remember, how do you know that? Because Jesus proves to us over a three year period of time, when you read the New Testament and the Gospels, you will find out that Jesus proved that he could rule over the sea and over trees. He would rebuke seeds and he would curse trees. Jesus was a bad man. He showed us that he had he had authority and he ruled over sickness and disease. Amen. For many who came to him, Jesus would heal them and deliver them and set them free. He also showed us that he had power over Satan and the demonic. He's walking through yeah. these three years and he is telling Satan, get thee behind me while he's telling demons, come out of him yeah. right now. Yeah. Jesus shows he has power and authority because, listen, he's able, he rules over substance and refreshments because he fed 5,000 and then he turned water into wine. I know some of you said that's my kind of man. Let's move on. I don't want you to get stuck there. 
He shows us he's got power over creation. Yes. And that he could ride on anything and he could have uh he could he could catch fish and there'd be money in the fish's mouth. Jesus showed us through the New Testament in the Gospels that he is in charge yes. and that he is a good ruler. And so they come, they understand he's coming, and they, there's good reason why you and I and why they should worship the Lord and give him praise because he's, he's good at what he does. All right, all right. The Lord is good at what he does. But then notice this for me. How did they receive him? They received him three ways. They gave the coat. They gave their clothes and branches and they gave a uh, celebration they gave well what do you do when you have a good ruler you give when he rules well you give what do you do when you have a good leader and he leads well you give Amen. wink wink nod nod Amen. <laughs> so they took the moment and the time that was available to them and they gave what they had the Bible says here in our text that they gave of their coat Zechariah 9 and 9 said this rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold your king is coming to you he is the just and having salvation lowly and riding on a donkey a coat the file of a donkey he just lets us know that listen it was recorded in prophecy that Jesus would come and that he would be riding on this donkey. Matthew recorded this same text, and he also said there was a colt and a donkey. This colt was young because it had, it had never been ridden before. And the donkey came along with it, probably its mother, to help keep it calm as it also traveled with Jesus, who Jesus sat on this coat, which had never had a person sit on before. They gave this coat, and it was just like Jesus said. Go down there and tell them, I need that coat. And if anybody says, why are you taking it? Tell them the master has me. It's probably that these men were disciples who were hiding out in Jerusalem. Because know this, Jesus has been working for three years. And anyone who is associated with Jesus at this point is probably going to be excommunicated from the synagogue. So most of them were pretty quiet if they didn't want any issues with the religious leaders. So they go down there and, and, and they release this thing to the master and Jesus uses it. For his glory. Not only did they uh, he, they give their coat, but they gave their clothes and their branches. They took off their cloaks and they laid them on the ground. They took off their cloaks and they put them on the donkey and put Jesus on top of this thing. And Jesus comes, he comes riding down, if you will, on a red carpet. Because that's what it was. They put their clothes on the ground and let Jesus sit on it. And it helps us to understand they gave all that they had. And what they could, they gave all that they could keep for themselves, but they gave it to them. And then there were some who didn't have anything to put right. on the ground. So they took palm branches. Yes. Matthew records that, that they take palm branches and they're waving it and they're also laying it down on the road saying, Hosanna, as Jesus is, come, is coming and he's marching in to Jerusalem. They gave of their cloaks and their branches. And then finally they gave, people gave their celebration. The crowd that was following him was completely excited because, listen, not too long ago, Lazarus had been raised from the dead. Amen. What kind of celebration would you have if you knew your friend had been raised from the dead? What kind of celebration would you have if you knew there was somebody who had the gift of healing, who had everything within them to bring dead things back to life, and you knew where he was and you could get a hold of him? What kind of celebration would you have if he came to town? They are following him because they know that he has raised Jesus, he has raised Lazarus from the dead. Not only that, just before that, he had given blind Bartimaeus his sight back. So people have heard about him and people have seen what he's done. And there's this great buzz of excitement about uh, the, the, the Jesus who has come through. He's a great prophet, but there's something else about him. Nobody can just raise folks from the dead unless God is with them. And so they offer up celebration to him because they're saying, this man is worthy of the praise that we should be honored. And I got to check the house real quick. I wonder, is anybody else that feel like me that the Lord is worthy? You said, Reverend, things ain't going too swell in my life. But I, I want you to know he's still worthy of all the praise. He's still worthy of all the praise. And Matthew said that they were crying out, Hosanna. This word Hosanna means save now 
or save, I pray thee, is a term that came, uh, that, that they use, uh, 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 maybe in England, that says God save the king. It's that kind of word. They're, they're, they're giving him this kind of praise, saying that he is a blessed savior. The blessed or who comes in the name of the Lord Jesus, they realized he came down there with some authority. Yeah. He didn't just grab a mic and went. No, he was called and sent. And yeah. so they realized he's a man of authority. And so they start saying, Hosanna in the highest. Yeah. This could mean let everything that has breath praise Jesus. Yeah. 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 He deserves all praise, all glory, and all yeah. honor. Regardless of what life circumstances are happening in your life, he deserves all glory and praise. Yeah. Yes. But you got to know that this celebration was also painful. Yes. Because you need to know this, that the same people, the same followers who are following him right now in about four to five days, who are shouting Hosanna, are going to turn around and say, crucify him. Yeah. It's going to be a painful celebration. Not only are they going to turn and say, crucify him, those who are shouting Hosanna, but his own boy who said, Jesus... Everybody else might leave you, but I won't leave you. Matter of fact, you know it was Peter. You know it was Peter. He said, he said, matter of fact, I'm willing to die for you, Jesus. And in about four or five days, it's going to go down. And before you and I know it, Peter is going to deny Jesus three times. The one who said, Lord, I'll never back down from you. I don't back down from a fight. But Peter is going to do such as, as such as that. It's going to it's a painful uh, a celebration that he's having because one of his followers who are with him right now as they speak and who's been with him for three years is going to turn around and sell him out yes. for eighteen pieces of silver. I mean, the thirty pieces of silver, which is eighteen dollars, going to sell him out, and then all of his disciples by the end of the day are going to abandon him. Church, it's a painful celebration. Yes. And so we see that today that, listen, they receive him as a king by his followers. Notice this second one as we move swiftly. But then they reject He's rejected as the, as the Messiah by his foes, yeah. his enemies. He's rejected by his enemies. He is received by his followers, but he is rejected by his foes. Notice with me what's going down. Jesus is there and he's in the midst of of them and the people are praising him saying Hosanna to the highest and while he was there man you gotta know all kinds of folk come to church hey man praise you hey man nothing bad I'm just saying you know you just don't know here in this crowd the text says the Pharisees are there and they hear the people saying Hosanna giving this high praise if you will almost a godly like kind of praise a God praise and they saying to themselves uh uh tell your people don't be doing this because what if they do this, they're ascribing some kind of deity to you, Jesus. You need to tell them, don't be praising like this. Uh, you're getting close to blasphemy. Don't, don't praise them. They're tell, trying to tell them to keep it calm. And Jesus takes times and gives us something we should know quickly about true praise. Yes. Here, here's, watch this. Here's what we learned about true praise. That true praise doesn't hide in the crowd. Right. When the Lord's done something good for you, yeah. true praise don't hide in the crowd. Yeah. The text says they were in the middle of the crowd with the people. Yeah. Everybody's saying hallelujah, Hosanna, but not them. They sitting there with their arms folded, with their lips poked out, and, and they're judging. Even though somebody's cousin had been healed by this man that they had. Right. That somebody's brother was raised from the dead, and here they are giving him praise. Somebody was in a real dark dilemma, and the Savior of the world came by. I remember in the text there was one lady who her son had died. Her husband had died before, and she was a widow, and her son had died. And and Jesus saw the procession coming by and it touched him. The text said he had such compassion. He walked up to the bed and touched the boy and he was raised That's to life. Right. I got a funny yeah. feeling and a sneaky yeah. suspicion. Yeah. This woman was in the crowd saying, Hosea yeah. to the heights. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because when the Lord does something wonderful in your life, you can't keep it to yourself. Yeah. And so they tell him, they teach us truly, listen, that true praise doesn't hide in the crowd. Amen. And I see something else in the text that Jesus helps us to understand that true praise, listen, doesn't hinder those in the crowd. Amen. And listen, listen, true praise doesn't try to get folk to be quiet and, and reserve yourself. Let something go down in my life and the Lord Amen. deliver me from it. You won't hear about it. You won't hear about it. They don't hear about it. I'm going to go to work and talk about it. They may not say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
but every chance I get, you know, Lord, I just want to thank you for how you bless me. Matter of fact, I don't know how you do, but every now and then I wake up like that. Lord, thank you for the activities of my day. Lord, thank you, Lord, I'm still can think straight. Lord, thank you, Lord, I'm able to pay my bills, oh God. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you watched out for me, Lord. That person got on my side of the road, but somehow, God, you kept me safe from all hurt, harm, and right Man, I don't, I'm here to tell you, that's why I love coming to the house of God, because I can say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus, without any fear of being sent to HR. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I can talk about Jesus without any fear of anybody saying we don't do this here. This, no, no, this place right here is reserved for all the thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. All the hallelujah, all the praise. This is his house, and, and, and he deserves it. If there's anywhere, any place I'm going to give him praise, it's in the sanctuary. Yeah. He teaches me, listen, in the text that true praise doesn't hinder people. Uh, him the people in the crowd, and then finally he says, "Listen, true praise, church. True praise will be heard from a crowd." Yeah. So they said, "Watch this. You better tell them to stop it." And Jesus says, "This. If they don't praise me, the rocks are going to have to cry and praise me." Oh, 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 oh. Listen, listen. You said all this metaphorically speaking. Uh, uh don't play. You need to know something. Jesus. Out of all, when you read the gospels, out of those three years. Every time Jesus did something great, he said, now keep it to yourself. Don't tell them. Every time Jesus would do something wonderful, there would be times where the people wanted to take hold of him and make him king. And Jesus said, no, it's not my time yet. Don't, don't worship me. Don't celebrate me like that yet. Just back down, back down. And, and every time they would say, he would say, now just go home, tell your people. But other than that, be quiet about this thing because I don't want this thing to explode just yet. But now this is his last week of ministry. We're at the end of his life. And, and now it come time for celebration. Here's what Jesus said. Go ahead and, go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Here's what he said. Here's what he said. Now, if y'all make the people stop, he said, listen, I am so worthy at this point at what I'm about to do for you, human beings. That the rocks, if they don't praise him, the people make him. He said, I'm going to make the rocks praise me. Because I'm about to go on Calvary and I'm about to die for the sins of the whole world. And your children and your children's children and your children's children's children will have an opportunity to know Jesus and to live in heaven with him for eternity. So he says, listen, I'm worthy of the praise. If you don't praise me, I'm going to have the rocks praise me. Because I'm about to leave, lose my life for y'all. That's what he teaches me in the text. His, his foes reject him. So Jesus takes time to witness to the Pharisees about what true praise is. Mm -hmm. But then notice something else, because the text is true. We're just walking through it. Not only, he comes right out of this witness and talking about, you better let them praise me. Mm -hmm. And as he enters into Jerusalem, then, here it is, Jesus wept. Yeah. Here it is. I told you, man, it's, it's a painful celebration. Here he is. He's come down now. Those are they. Those they know it. They they've seen and heard about Jesus. Now he comes into Jerusalem and to the to the big city, God's chosen people. And you know who's waiting for him at Jerusalem? Nobody. Right. You know who should have known his coming? It's Jerusalem people. But you know who is there? They say Jesus. We've been waiting on you, the Messiah. You know. You know who was there? Nada. Nobody. Nada. Nobody. You know why? Because nobody was expecting the Messiah to come in riding on a donkey. That's right. They weren't expecting the Messiah to come in so meek and lowly and mild. They were expecting a big shot. A uh, big baller, shot caller. They were expecting some kind of political figure. Because yeah. know this, here's some backdrop here that in this time, Rome has control over Jerusalem. Yeah. And God's people are underneath the control and rule of Rome, of Caesar, if you will. And the Jewish people are, are just, they're hot about this. Because some of the people who are serving, like King uh, Herod and, and, and some of the crazy folk, they're serving and desecrating the temple, doing all kind of ungodly things. And, and the Jews want deliverance from the hands of the Romans. Yeah. And so that's what they've been praying for. And so when they read the scriptures, they're looking for this deliverer, yeah. this Messiah who will bring them out of this kind of bondage. They're looking for a political person. Yeah. It, it's like us. In those days, in the 60s, Martin Luther King was that 
person that we believe to bring us out of a, a situation where we're in that kind of a strong voice. Well, that's what they're looking for. But Jesus comes in riding right. <laughs> on a donkey. Not even a horse, but a donkey. <laughs> he don't even have a chariot with it. He just got a donkey. He couldn't even buy his own saddle. All he had was clothes sitting on top of a donkey. Here he is coming in meek and lowly and mild. And they've been looking for a mighty man to come through the town. That's what they've been listening for. That's what they've been looking for. But he doesn't come with any of that. Because, listen, we do it and they do it. Sometimes we interpret scripture based on our particular lens. Yes. We say, based on what I believe, what I want, I believe this scripture says this to me. And they did the same thing. They said, he's going to look like this, act like this, and do this. But the real issue was he wasn't talking about an earthly kingdom. Jesus wasn't representing an earthly kingdom. He was representing the heavenly kingdom. And the bondage that he was going to deliver the people from was not from Caesar, but was from Satan. And you need to hear me. It was nothing political. It was all spiritual, which would change the lives of many for all eternity. So Jesus here, listen, Jesus weeps because of the coming traumatic problems. He says, here's what the issue is. He weeps because Jesus knows what's about to happen to his people because they missed him when he came. Watch what happens in the text. We read it earlier. Watch this. Here's the cause. He says, here's the cause. It's in verse 42. He says this. He says, you would say, even you had known on this day that I was coming. He said, the things that make for peace. Yes. Now understand this church that they were looking for peace in all the wrong places. Yes, yes. yes. They were looking for peace in all the wrong places. Yes. They thought it would come from the political, but it did not. They were looking for peace. And here Jesus said that they missed God's way of peace. God's way of peace was not a, a, a big battle or a fight that was going to happen on the battlefield. God's way of peace was going to be put on the cross. Yes. That was the way he was going to bring peace between you and I. Here's, here's Romans. He told me to tell you. Uh, therefore now being justified by faith. Watch this. We have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, he's trying to tell us that you couldn't have peace with God unless Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. Amen. Jesus could have fought his way. He could have put up his fisticuffs and did his thing, but that wouldn't have brought peace. It's when he surrendered his life. Yeah. Matter of fact, he said in one text, he says, uh, no man takes my life, but I freely give it. I freely lay it down. Because he knows if he dies, here it is again. He said, if a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, he said, it abides alone. But listen, church, Jesus, once he dies, he said, if he be lifted up, he could draw all the world to him. All because he understood that he was God's peace. Yes. They missed God's way of peace. Not only that, but they missed when God's peace came. And verse 44 said this, because you did not know the time of your visitation. They knew all the scriptures. Don't get it twisted. Don't be, don't say to yourself, oh, he's being hard on them. No, the Jewish people study scriptures from age 12. They were required to memorize whole books when they started. They were at 12 years old. So to say when he says you should have known it, he's serious. You all should have known when I was coming. Uh -huh. But he says here it is. You miss when God's peace came. Yes. That was their cause. But then notice the consequence. He says, listen to this. They were looking for peace in all the wrong places. But here's the consequence. You won't find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking for, you don't want it. <laughs> you won't find what you're looking for. And what you find, you will not want it. He says in verse 42, he says, listen, listen to this. They will become visionless. He says, would that you even had known on the day of my visitation that makes for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. You will not be able to, they won't be able to know when the Lord, they, they won't even be able to see the visions of Jesus. They won't even have the revelation that Jesus is the Savior of the world. He's going to hide it from them. And that's why you and I now, the Bible says, are being engrafted into, the, uh, into this world, into this new walk with the Lord. Because he's opened our eyes. Not only did he say that they will be visionless, but then they will become victims of violence. He says their city is going to be torn down. And that is what made Jesus. Jesus Christ. 
that they didn't, they missed his coming. They missed what brought peace in their life. And Jesus is now, it, it, the text when it says he wept, it's not a, <laughs> Jesus broke down with tears and sobbing. It's that kind of word in the Greek. He is emotional and he is crying because he is seeing in the future what is going to happen to Jerusalem and how Jerusalem will be laid to rest, yeah. laid to waste. And you said, Reverend, what they got to do with us? Well, let me let's lean in and let's connect the dots here. You and I, a lot of times, are looking for peace in all the wrong places. Amen. Yes, we do. We look for peace in all the wrong places, and we don't find it where we're looking at. Amen. And what we do find, we don't want it. After you figure out that thing that you've been after, you finally get it, you say to yourself, this ain't even, this ain't even worth it. This ain't even worth it. He wasn't worth it. She wasn't worth it. I, it. When you find, when you're looking for it in all the wrong places, you will find the things that you don't need. Yeah. And if you're weak enough, you'll grab a hold of that thing before, and it, it will grab a hold of you. And so here, the Lord teaches us here that, listen, you and I sometimes are looking for peace in all the wrong places. We look for peace sometimes in folks' credit. We say if they got good credit, then we can get it, you know. And everything will be okay. We look at folks' credentials and say, oh, they oh, they, they look nice on paper. They look blah, 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 blah. But then you check their character, and their character can't keep them where their credit says they are. Yeah. You, you, we look for things like, uh, we, we, we try to find peace in cash and in clothes and in cars and in creature comforts. We even try to find peace in cannabis. Yes. That's the new word for marijuana. I'm just trying to. We, we look for peace. We look for peace. We look for peace in all kinds of things. I, I'm not talking about the medical stuff. I'm talking about the recreational stuff. We look for peace in all kinds of things. We look for peace in and 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 crack cocaine. We look for peace in, in in places where God is not there. The Savior is not there. The Prince of Peace is not there. And it's the same way in their life. They are looking for the political figure and they miss when peace came. Can you say amen? amen. And I still believe today that Jesus is weeping when his people, his own people, turn from him and turn to everything else trying to get peace. And you and I know, you are somebody in here knows that you can't find it where we're looking. Amen. Only in Christ Jesus can we find true peace. Yes, can you say amen? amen? Listen, he was rejected as the Messiah by his foes because, listen church, uh, they, they, they were looking for a big time shot caller. But he, he, here's where we got to go. We got to go. We got to cl cl conclude this right here. So here it is. It's a painful celebration. He's received as king, but it's painful. Because they're going to turn around and crucify him. They're going to yell, crucify him. He's, he's rejected by the Pharisees, and it's going to be painful. It's painful to be rejected by people that you've been trying to help. It's painful to, to have people stab you in your back and you've been with them the whole way, the way Jesus is going to do yeah. Jesus. It, it's a painful celebration. But then finally, notice this with me. He is remembered as our Lord in the future. What he's about to do helps us to know that he will be remembered for all times and for all eternity. Right. Here it is, our Jesus is in, he's celebrating now and it's painful, but yet here's what I noticed about Jesus, he keeps it moving. Mm -hmm. He keep, no, Notice what he does because today is Sunday. Today is Sunday, Palm Sunday. He's entering into Jerusalem today on Palm Sunday. But then, and, and he's having this wonderful celebration, but Jesus is going to move on to Monday. And Monday, he's going to go down to the sanctuary, and he's going to go there for prayer. And you know what he finds in the house of prayer? He finds a den of thieves. Yes. And Jesus goes down there and says, you've turned my father's house into a den of thieves. And he kicks them all out. Man, that's a painful celebration. He was going there to celebrate in worship. Only to find out that the place he needs to worship is full of wickedness. Yeah. That's a painful celebration. Yeah. Yeah. He moves on to Tuesday, church. He moves on and he's headed towards the cross. It's painful. And when he gets there on Tuesday, Mary anoints him. He's celebrating with his friends. And Mary, he comes to Mary. She anoints him for his burial. Yeah. What a painful celebration. Yeah. She's saying, Jesus, I'm glad you're here. But you know, and I know, you have to die today. Right. You have to die this week. It's a painful celebration. Yeah. And here's what's so interesting, that Jesus didn't stop right there. He kept it moving. Yeah. Wednesday comes, and the Bible does not record any activity of Jesus on Wednesday. 
Maybe he was in Bible study. Maybe he was resting. Whatever the case or the cause of concern, know this. It still had to be painful nowhere that I'm on my way to an old rugged cross. What do you do when all you all, all he knows is that there's pain and death at the end of his journey? But Jesus still keeps it moving forward. And he goes down on Thursday, church. And Jesus celebrates the Passover one last time with his disciples. One last time. Telling them that I won't eat this with you until we are together in the new place. Yeah. This is our last time eating together. You need to know this. And so here's what Jesus says. He says what we're having is a painful celebration. Yeah. Yeah. Taking communion for the very last time. But I love this. Even though it's his last time, Jesus didn't stay there. He moved, kept on moving towards the cross because Friday came. Yes. And Friday, and on Friday, there was there was uh, the celebration of the Pharisees. They were celebrating that, Brother Darren, they had caught Jesus. Finally, they got Jesus into their custody, and now they're about to crucify him. And Jesus, who could have stopped everything, let it all go down. Yeah. Because he knew if he doesn't, he would not be remembered as the Lord of Lords, as the King of Kings, Glory. as the Redeemer of all humanity. Jesus says, I've got to, even though it's a celebration and it's painful, here he is, i got to kiss his hoops. He yeah, said, Reverend, what does any of that got to do with us? Maybe your life is like Jesus. You're in moments of painful celebration. And you're saying, Reverend, how, how, how are we going to get this done? I can't he hardly crack a smile. Reverend, I can't hardly worship. Reverend, I can't hardly, I don't feel good. I don't feel right. Reverend, I'm in a, I'm in a dry season in life, Reverend. I'm, this thing is hurting me. It's a painful situation. What advice would you give me today? I'll only give you the advice Jesus gave us in his living and in his dying. Keep it moving towards the cross. You and I got to keep our eyes on the cross. Why, Reverend? Because that's where all of our peace began. Yes. That's where all of our joy began. If Jesus hadn't have got on the cross and stayed there, yes. one old song said it like this, it wasn't the nails that held him on the cross. It was his love for you and for me that kept him on the cross. Yes. Remember, he said, don't you worry. He says, I could call a thousand angels of angels down here to get me down from this mess. But because I need my people to be redeemed, he says, I'm going to stay here and take this call. I'm done, church. You said, Reverend, so what should we do? Let's do what Jesus did. Let's keep moving towards the cross. Let's keep our eyes on what Jesus is about to do. Let's celebrate what he's about to do. You said, will everything be all right? It may and it may not. But I do know this. The Lord holds all things under his control. Yes. Let me close with this with this thought right here. Listen to this. This is this one illustration. Maybe that'll help us to understand how we can keep it moving. One day there was this painter who had painted this interesting photo, interesting picture, and it was hanging in a gallery for all to see, and people all the way around were coming around to see this particular photo, this particular painting. And people were coming, and one day this chess player came by who, who is this chess champion, and he's at this particular art gallery looking at this picture because this picture is a picture of Satan playing chess with a man. And on this picture, Satan is on one side playing chess, and he has this dark, grimacing smile on his face, and he's smiling at his opponent on the other side. And on the other side is a young man who has this uh, look of despair on his face. And the title of the picture says, Checkmate. Mm. The title of the picture says, Checkmate. And then the chess player, the avid chess player who's looking at the picture, it seemed he stared at it for hours and hours. And finally, as he was getting close to it being late, he yelled out, it's a lie. Yeah. It's an absolute lie. It's an absolute lie. Here comes the security guard, another man from the corner. They come around the corner. So what's the problem, man? What's the problem? He says, it's a lie. And one of the men said, are you saying this picture is false? Are you saying it's not the real deal? He says, no, the picture is real. He says, but the picture says chess make. And I'm looking at the chess board, and he says, I noticed this one thing. The young man still has one more move. Amen. Come back to me, church. Yeah. Whatever you're going through, I want you to know you got one more move. Yeah. And that's towards Jesus Christ. Yeah. Listen, you have the same move that Jesus had. Yeah. Because while Jesus knew his hour 
gospel was coming, he still had one more move. Yes. He could have quit in the garden against him. Yes, but he said, because if I don't go to this cross, yes. these people won't be redeemed. Yes. So he says, I got one more move. Yes. He says, listen, if I don't go to the cross, yes. I can't be nobody's help. Yes. If I don't go to the cross, I can't bring nobody peace. Yes. If I don't go to the cross, I can't bring nobody joy. Yes. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I got one more move. Nail me to the cross. Do what you want to right now. Because when it's all said and done, I will rise again. I will rise again. The enemy got you right now. It might look like checkmate. We got you, but I tell you, if God be for you, I said if God be for you, you more than the whole world again. And I tell you what, Lord, He overcame the world. Yes, He did. Now hanging on the cross. And on that Sunday morning, my Savior got up with all power, all authority in His hands. And I'm here to tell you, whatever trial and tribulation you're going through, whatever season, whatever painful celebration you got to have, you, it's your birthday and, and you're sick, I want you to know you ought to still celebrate because life is still within your physical body. You still got your right mind. You're still able to move. You're still able to do what God has put with all that is in you to do. Don't you yet let the enemy fool you and say it's I tell you what, when it's over, let me tell you, the Bible says, for we have a home not made with hands. Watch this, that's eternal in the heavens. Thank him for going through it. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Jesus, I feel you, man. Thank you for what you've done. I'm closing. I'm done, church. Uh, Jesus, but I just want to thank the Lord for what he did. Hallelujah. He came in on Calvary. He came in on Calvary. The center is free to save a wretch like you and for me. Can you say amen? Come on, say shout You still got one more move. You got one more move. It's is it, every time you get in trouble, every time you think about quitting, you, you make a beeline towards the cross and see Jesus hanging on the cross. Not for not for a good time, church. He's hanging on the cross for a real important reason. So that you and I can have everlasting and eternal life. Because my Savior is sitting in eternity right now at the right hand of the Father, the Bible says, yes. steadily making intercession for you and I. And, and I can imagine some days he says to his Father, you know, gee, Lord, God, I told him I was coming back. When we're going to go get him? When we're going to go get him? When we're going to go get him, Lord? I see their suffering. I see their pain. I see what they're going through, Lord. God, because the Bible says, no man knows the day nor the hour. Not even Jesus himself knows when God has determined that he's coming back for his children. Yeah. I can imagine him sitting and saying, Lord, man, they're going through, God. When are we going to go get them? Yeah. Every time you think about giving up, I want you to say, man, I got one more move towards Jesus. He died for my sins. He gave up his life so that I can have everlasting and eternal life. That I can have peace and joy in my soul. Yes, Lord. I make no promises to you if it doesn't get better. Hallelujah. I'm making no promises to you that if he don't heal you. I make no promises to you that, that, that the end of what you're going through won't all come out roses and peaches and cream and herbs. Amen. But I do make this declaration from God's holy word. He said he'll never leave you never. and he'll never forsake you. Never. And, I, and, and I'm done. And as Brother Darren said sometime in his prayer, says, Lord, give us a home in your kingdom. Yes. I want to tell you right now, God has made a home in his kingdom. Yes. Yes. He said, I've gone away to prepare a place for you. Listen, so when I come back, I can receive you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I thank God for a painful celebration. Yes. 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 Yes.